The Ukrainian authorities say towns northwest of the capital, Kiev, are under relentless bombardment. Missiles have struck key targets in the capital and in the east of Ukraine. The attack on Kharkiv has residents scrambling to flee, desperation and panic. <laughs> Born students are finding escape especially hard. From last few days, we don't know if we will survive more or not. Last day we had a very massive blast near to the near to our hostel. We saw it, it was very scary. Right now we are not having water supply, we are not having electricity, we don't have food to eat, we don't know how much we will be surviving. Day by day things are getting worse and worse. Ukraine border पर फंसे छात्रों के वीडियो आपने सोशल मीडिया पर जरूर देखे होंगे। माइनस टेम्परेचर में छात्र खोले आसमान के नीचे रहने को मजबूर हैं। ऐसे चार पांच वीडियो हजारों हैंडल से घुमाए जा रहे हैं। भारतीय नागरिकों के लिए जब मुश्किल की घड़ी आई तो मोदी यूरोप के मंदिरों के दरवाजे उनके लिए खोलवा रहे हैं। छात्रों को सुरक्षित लाने के लिए मोदी ने बैप्स स्वामी नारायण संस्था से क्या मदद मांगी? While the whole world was worried about the conflict in Ukraine, suddenly I got a call from the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi. It was around midnight in India and there was a deep concern, worry, anguish and earnestness in his voice. He requested whether we could activate our BAPS volunteers and devotees living in Europe to help set up relief camps on the border towns of Ukraine. As per the guidelines of our great spiritual masters, His Holiness Pramukh Swami Maharaj and His Holiness Mahan Swami Maharaj, service and compassion are the values they have nourished us upon. Instantly, we gathered volunteers from almost 11 countries over Zoom to mobilize our resources. Because the time was short, midnight in India and evening in Europe. So the purpose of the call was very, very, very clear that on the basis of the current situation across the border between U uh, Ukraine and Russia, how can we help? What can we do? And how fast we can act? Pujo Ramri Swami asked us a few questions um, about how could we mobilize ourselves? What are the resources available? and. Can you go to Poland? I, we need to set up a camp there. I think that call went on for about uh, two and a half hours, but subsequently when Pujya Brahmavari Swami left the call conversation, we carried on that conversation. And on the call, we were you know, adding more and more cardiacers to it. And as and when we needed, we, we instructed them like who is ready to go. And we got a call from one of our cardiacarta. Uh, I guess it was like 1 a.m. And he just called up that we might need a volunteers uh, to be part of this uh, uh, Ukraine uh, crisis. So we started preparing the list. So in the first list, we had at least nine volunteers who were ready to go straight away. And we decided that uh, I should leave uh, next day. And uh, I booked the ticket for the next day. And the next thing I knew was on the flight to Poland. Um, I was nervous. I was a bit worried, probably a little bit scared. Uh, my children were worried for my safety, as was my wife, because we don't know what we were going into. I got notice at 10 in the morning. I had to leave at 12 in the noon. So it was pretty, very, very quick. And even my wife was not expecting that I would go like so quickly. And at, at that moment, uh, my mind was in two situations. Like, I mean, I had double uh, minds and I was really reluctant to go at first. Like, is it safe to go? Should I go? Should me and my husband both should go? It was a very difficult task. Uh, decision to make with the perspective uh, of my job because it's just 15 days old. But when I told her that uh, I'm planning to go to this relief camp and the response I got was that can I also come? When I see it on TV where like crisis and all I just feel that in spite of feeling sympathy for them what if I just can help them? I was like okay now I can do much more than just pray I can be there with my people I should be, of course, helping others because it's just not about we, like me and my wife. It's about everybody who need helps, uh, needs our help right now. The BAPS has 
regularly rushed to help in floods and famines, in earthquakes and disasters. But this was different. This was war. And a war involves multiple countries, international borders, immigration and evacuation. We reached out to all the authorities concerned while the volunteers prepared for the journey ahead. And we know that the challenges were difficult. However, under freezing conditions, volunteers rushed from almost 11 countries overnight from countries as far as the United States to actually gather in the border town of Jesuf. Four volunteers from Warsaw, and they were the first one who were actually very close to to uh, to the site. It's called Jesu, where the students were expected to come. It was a hotel which was arranged by Indian High Commission. Uh, me and three of our carriers from Poland, Mandar, we were the first to touch the base here. The situation there was like chaos, and uh, nobody was knowing what's going on. एक दिवस सुधी तो हम कहीं खबर न थी क्या बद्दे जरूरियात रहती है लेकिन बद्दे जगह ये भागता था। We try to find out that uh, what requirements are there from Madam Ambassador, and Madam Ambassador said that uh, everything is like uh, uh, going on, but still uh, they required a little bit of help in the food, and that's what was decided that let's try and set up a mobile kitchen. Uh, they just contacted me and Mr. Kayur came and met me at my hotel and said that, you know, we, we, we will run a... At first I was a little confused because, you know, normally hotels don't allow you to just come and set up a soup kitchen like that on, on their own. And that's what I told him. I said, they won't let you set up a kitchen of their own because they, it's theirs. They want to serve their own food. But he convinced me to uh, try. And so I came with him here and it, Dr. Mazur, who owns this hotel, we spoke to him and he agreed to some kind of an arrangement. So Chirag Bhai from Paris, Chirag Bhai Godiwala from Paris, you know, he immediately stood up and he said, I'm ready to go with my cooking one. The only thing that struck me at that point of time was that I was ready to, to leave. I was ready to go with my kitchen van. So I was actually doing a Google map, uh, you know, from Paris to um, uh, Warsaw and Poland, how long it is. So it was, you know, around 21 hours drive. So we left midnight, on the day that we had the meeting, we had the meeting starting about 10, 10 30. And then 12 o'clock, uh, 12 30, we left from Paris. You know, up and away from Paris to Switzerland in 19 hours with his mobile kitchen. Then we were off to Poland and bam, 22 hours later, we were in Poland already on the, on the spot then. And getting on with making food for these um, for these people. There was no particular timing, there was no particular schedule. The first day, I was totally confused. I was made 500 people. I said that I was four bus at night. I said that I was two bus at night. So I was going to go on and on and on and on. The first day, I was going to go on and on and on and on. I was going to go on and on and on and on. And I was going to go on and on and on and on. I was going to go on and on and on and on. I was going to go on and on and on. But every day, on an average, we were serving about a thousand people day and night. One good thing was that the BAPS volunteers were available round the clock. Uh, if you gave them a, a, a charge, a duty to perform at any time of the day or night, they were available and that's a very good thing. That's a very good thing. There was no task beneath anybody. There was no responsibility that people attached themselves to. If a job needed doing, you scrambled towards and getting it doing. People left their egos outside and their love inside. So basically, uh, the coaches come at any time. And like right now, it's, well, it's like 3 a.m. in the morning and there might be a bus, two or three buses coming right now. As you can see that this coach is just coming right now. And uh, probably these, these are the, seems like full of the students. And our colleagues will help them to get inside the hotel as soon as possible because of the cold weather. Like just before two hours, there were six buses together and there were 345 students uh, all came together right now. So during this time we, we thought that there should be someone at the gates who welcomed them to give them comfort that they are at the safe place now 
that they are with their brothers and sisters. So that was the first process that we have set up, that is the arrival and welcoming. Once they arrive, uh, as per uh, the guidelines provided by Indian Embassy, we need to register them. We need to have their information, passport details, address and stuff like that. Then all the students uh, were taken to the accommodation. Uh, once uh, they are comfortable with their accommodation, we take them to the kitchen and uh, we try to make sure that uh, they get warm food uh, whenever they arrive. We have been on our toes 24-7. We have uh, we have served Indian Indian students even at four in the morning, and that is how a lot of the students, a lot of the uh, you know evacuees who were mostly students, were able to eat hot vegetarian meals cooked by BAPS volunteers, and and I'm very grateful for that. You people are amazing. Like they make us comfortable over here. They provide us three meals and very good food, like typically Indian food we are getting over here. After six days of struggle, we are getting a good food. We could have food, like, after the eight days of, like, not having food and then getting to have food was, like, a real. Uh, I've had a good sleep over here, good food. They are taking very good care of people over here. The next part was simultaneously uh, was to create a manifest. Uh, which is again required by the Indian Embassy so that they can have a smooth departure as well. So once manifest is ready, Embassy employees will go to the particular area and they try to stick the uh, list of the students who are going. Then uh, we take them to the coaches and that's how they depart. And then we realized that there, there's obviously uh, a lot more help that's needed everywhere. Um, so we went out to the border. Um, we had uh, aid items. We supported families that have been staying in the cold and, and walking and coming across the border and trying to find a level of support. We did everything from starting fires, carrying logs to these fire pits and starting them there. One day we uh, emptied an entire truck of water bottles that were sent over by the Polish government and we lined them up and were handing them out. We carried luggage. That was an important part of the work we did. As soon as the families, especially the mothers um, and the grandparents would cross over from the Ukrainian borders, we would take their luggage. It was very difficult for us to understand what pain that they were going through at the border. When we spoke with you know, a couple of students on a one-to-one -one basis, they were being very open with us. They were telling us they had left, you know, their homes with nothing. Some of them didn't even had a chance to bring their passport, and it was that difficult situation for them. Uh, some of the students, they narrated uh, how difficult it was their journey from their, their town, wherever they were in Ukraine, to the border. On an average, they were walking about 45 to 50 kilometers to cross the border. Only few of them were very fortunate to get a cab or come by a train. The journey between, before this hotel, we don't even know that we are alive or we are not. Because uh, every time, like not even a single second is there when we can't hear anything. There is explosions every time near my university. I'm living uh, like in a circumference of two kilometers. There are explosions. I don't know because I, I'm hearing it continuously. At night we saw two missiles uh, flowing through our apartment. We thought almost it will hit our apartment but they crossed it. So from that we decided okay it's not safe anymore and we pack it up and we... <clears throat> the day we decided to go was when we heard shelling and we all got up to that. Like, we woke up to the uh, explosion somewhere near to our station. We got scared. And when we reach the bunker, um, there is no place to sit. Few chairs, all the dusty areas. We were for eight days in the bunker. At times we didn't get food at all. So it was very difficult. So it was horrible for me. I, I was totally scared. I'm not living in my flat. I was living in the bunkers. And there in the bunkers, I was just having the, uh, the, the a single blanket to put it down. And just I was lying down in, on 
floors so it was horrible scaring and i was not eating anything from like in 24 hours we just have a one meal and that is not enough for us obviously so we walked for 2 hours to the railway station from our hostel and then it was really bad because walking and then it was so cold we reached the railway station and while like the time we entered railway station there was explosion right behind the railway station that is for near about 500 meter radius and 26 people died and more than 100 people are injured in there and we are and we think we are in a good grace that we are alive so at first we did not get i did not get placed in the train because the train was so full and people were everywhere but i know how i enter in the compartment i don't listen anyone i stand in the compartment and when i see or when i was backward the compartment closed anyhow we managed to get in the train and then we go, came here but on the way to our kiev the people just off the light they say they don't you don't have to on your locations and everything that was so horrible because every like the lights are off and there is dark dark and we don't have to speak anything we don't have to open our phone and ho border pe gaya to ratre to border pe gaya tyare hum log ke feel kar rahe actually ki like ratre border par when i went it was minus 6 degree hum log ko half an hour khali bar ubar hi aane to haath thiji gaya tha pag thiji gaya tha like they were not even like moving ek angri pe like finger pe move thata thata hamara like pain khawa lag gaya to तो लाइक दे स्टैंड इन द लाइन क्यू फॉर 16 आवर्स 8 आवर्स 10 आवर्स लाइक डिफरेंट पीपल फॉर टू कम इनटू द टू इनटू द पोलैंड सो लाइक तयारे खबर पड़े छे के लाइक आ लोग को केटलू सहन करियो छे आई लुक एट देम एंड आई थिंक टू माइसेल्फ हाउ ऑन अर्थ डिड दे मैनेज टू गेट हियर हाउ वुड आई हैव फेल्ट इफ माय डॉटर वाज पुट इन सच अ पोजीशन we are actually you know talking to them make them feel and at least trying to find out the problems they have we encountered a case where a student was deeply shocked so we we asked him to you know sit down on a chair kevur bhai you know took his jacket out again that was very emotional you know i can't describe you know he removed his jacket put jacket on on this boy because he was you know shivering with cold so we me and uh, viraj went to the doctor on the facility itself uh, that was the moment i realized that nobody on this earth should go through such grief so we asked him are you okay and you know there was no answer there was a silence so we repeatedly asked him are you okay do you need anything he was deeply shocked to an extent that he he couldn't speak he couldn't uh, sip a glass of water he could not eat anything he had been he had lost his passport he 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 did not have any luggage with him so there was this little diary sitting on this table so i grabbed the diary and i asked everybody to give him a pen and we said okay let's try something else so we asked him to hold a pen and i wrote on the book that my name is and there there was a blank so he wrote narendra in the in the blank very small al- uh, alphabet and we all started clapping so we kept asking him questions just to engage him to see how you know if if that works second question he, you know we wanted to know where is he from so we said i am from and then there, there was a blank so he wrote visag so he was from visakhapatnam then i asked him a question you know just again by writing i like playing cricket and there was yes no answer so immediately he ticked on no so we knew that his he you know his brain started working he started thinking and started responding and then we asked straight away we asked him a question what are you having you know what what problem you have and he wrote this word i am shock but it's just so satisfying that we managed to you know bring him back on his feet and bring his smile back on his, his face what they have gone through is something that we will never ever go through in our lives you know i spoke to many students many many students uh, and what's a recurring theme amongst all of them was um a thread of panic fear uh terror and doubt and i think by doubt i mean that times some of the students doubted whether they would ever leave the country alive we never have to lose hope because uh, one time was there that like 
I was thinking that I will die because one of my friend he is in fourth course he died by firing like Russian army killed him so I was thinking that I will never meet my parents but hopefully I'm like I was thinking that I will do it I will do it so I just managed managed the way from my flat to station station to Poland and then here so I'm good now but like we just have to stay strong we don't have to lose hope at all and then we will do it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. You will be back home soon. Okay. Uh, you're home now. You're with a family. Okay. Yeah. You're safe. Uh, I admire Thank you. so much. Thank you. Thank you. She's someone's daughter. And she was alone. She didn't have a single friend at the camp apart from us. Um, and the warmth of a hug goes a million miles. And I hope I expressed uh, that warmth as if it was the same. And I will never be able to replace the role that her parents will be able to fulfill. But I think she needed the armor protection. And I just felt that there's something that we could have done more than provide a food and shelter and a place to live in. I, I was thinking of my own children at the same time. And through her, you know, I saw my own daughters. Uh, there's nothing more difficult than to stand opposite someone and listen to their ordeal the way that she had experienced. It was tragic and it was just a very national reaction for me. I think the most important thing in such situation is we were helping uh, them personally to each student. Um, that we are their family. It's, it's not really about the cushion, it's not really about the pillow that they get, but it's about the, uh, it's about the warmth that, that, they, that we have been able to provide luckily to them. So as a team of volunteers, we decided, you know, let's do whatever we can. We arranged some SIM cards, you know, to, to help students, you know, to make their first contact with, with their family back home. So there was every small little thing that we could do was giving us inner peace, inner happiness. This is, you know, this, this feeling is beyond words. And I think upon reflection, I realized then that we were making a difference. And perhaps my anxiety when I was on the flight was now removed. And I kind of knew that we were serving a really good purpose here. We were getting ready for people to go home. And there was a girl who came to the registration desk. It was her birthday. And she told her, why, you know, our volunteers were registering her name. And he asked, you know, what's your date of birth? And Dharmesh Bhai, it was, you know, registering her. And she said, you know, it's today. And we decided to, you know, to surprise her, to give her a surprise. And we celebrated her birthday. You know, we managed to get a cake and, you know, she was very emotional. And so the other volunteers were. Happy birthday, dear Buddha. Happy birthday to you. As a team of volunteers, every now and then, you know, in a small teams, we were gathering in a corner, holding each other's hand and trying to bring morale of each other you know, to, to bring that spirit of humanity. You might think that, you know, under that kind of pressure, lack of sleep, intermittent meals, coping with the trauma of incoming and outgoing evacuees might have broken some of them, but no way, you know. They were still full of energy, still full of happiness, still full of joy. There were moments when we would chuckle, laugh, some would cry altogether, but the energy remained with them. After seeing the people, I got hope. I got hope because they had hope. The volunteers. I'm really thankful to all of them because at such a situation, it's like a blessing. Like whatever they're doing for us, it's feeling like a blessing to us, like after living such miserably for eight days. I think it is a God, God grace for us that we reached here and we meet BAPS volunteers that help us so much. Because I, I hear I got many good friends from BAPS and they used to speak a lot and we shared almost a lot. You people are amazing. And the volunteers are very supporting us and 
there is no word for describe their support and everything so i would like to say thank you very much to the volunteers because what they are doing is a perfect job not many people can do this i'm really happy to be here with them uh, first of all i want to say thank you uh, your organization volunteers baps and embassy people were rocking it completely they had they gave us hope avungalala da nanga inge oru nambikayila irukom so a great thank you for them avangalukku romba thanks i would like to say to the baps organization a big thank you a big thank you on behalf of the government of india a big thank you on behalf of the embassy of india in poland and a big thank you on behalf of all the co coordinators the 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 embassy officials and everyone who worked for the um, operation ganga in poland so on behalf of all of us i think i am the right person to say a big thank you to baps jitne hamare baps ke swami narayan ji ke anvayi aur yahan par swayam seva ke liye aaye hain volunteer ban kar aaye hain main unko bahut bahut badhai dena chahta hu unki bahut bahut prashansa karna chahta hu सब मिलकर इतनी सहायता कर रहे हैं सबकी और बिना आ, किसी चीज के बारे में मांगे किसी चीज के बारे में सोचे बिना किसी चीज की परवाह किए दे हैव बिन द बैकबोन ऑफ गेटिंग थिंग्स डन ऑन ग्राउंड एंड इट इज मेड अ ग्रेट डिफरेंस इन हेल्पिंग द एंटायर प्रोसेस आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू ईच वन ऑफ एंड आई वुड लाइक everybody who has been evacuated and everybody who is related to person who has been evacuated to thank all of them for making things easy main aap sabhi ki sarahna karta hu aapka aabhar vyakt karta hu aapko aaj bhale hi kuch kehne ka shayad avsar na mila ho lekin aap sabhi sanghathanon ne jo kaam kiya hai main sabka dhanyawad karta hu um and the women the girls who are there i think we had seven or eight women they have uh, great opportunities and jobs careers uh, very busy lives but under extreme pressure they took unpaid time and leave off um they worked as a unit as a team um there was no particular task that was um not important to them they mucked in everywhere from registration to cleaning but also healing because they had that soft touch that was needed when the hand of friendship and warmth was needed to comfort people at that time and uh, their role in this process the ladies all of them uh, was critical and crucial hame help mili hai hum isme bahut khush hain hame logo ne help kiya hai hum volunteers ne help kiya hai hum bahut khush hain hame bhi help karni chahiye jaan jiski hum hum inhe nahi jante volunteers hame nahi jante phir bhi inhone hame help kiya ye hamare liye bahut hai मैं यहाँ पर आया तो कुछ लोगों से जैसे ये जो ड्रेस पहने थे मैं पूछा मैं तो बी के बारे में जानता भी नहीं था कि क्या है मैंने पूछा कि आप लोग कहाँ से आए हो तो वो बोले कि आ, मैं यूके से आया हूँ एक बोले जर्मनी से आया हूँ तो मैं पूछा कि आप लोग इतने दूर से आए आपने आपको सरकार ने भेजा है तो बोले नहीं हम मंदिर की तरफ से आए हैं स्वामी नारायण मंदिर जो अक्षरधाम मंदिर some people who are from sweden and germany they crossed almost like three four countries just to came here they came here with their expenses and they stayed here and they worked here day and night some some people came like um, some, uh, even some people they left their family here and they came here just for to volunteer and to help others on very first day we had uh, nine volunteers and as we ramped up we have we are now at 66 volunteers from across the europe ireland france uk sweden germany poland czech republic usa main dekha ki yahan par log nisvarth apna matlab balidan de rahe hain matlab nisvarth prem jo dekha jo itna har cheez mein लोग मतलब फ्री में आए हैं अपना काम और अपना बिजनेस छोड़ करके सबको अपना काम प्यारे होते हैं आज तो पैसे पैसे के पीछे इतनी दुनिया पागल है कि अपना काम नहीं छोड़ती बोलते हैं कि एक दिन जाऊंगा तो मेरा बिजनेस बहुत नुकसान होगा और इस इस स्थिति में लोग छोड़ करके तो मुझे लगा कि इंसानियत आज भी जिंदा है कितना लोग भी तो मैंने भी बोला एक दो लोगों से कि मैं भी ज्वाइन करना चाहता हूँ मैं भी थोड़ा हेल्प करना चाहता हूँ तो लोग बोले कि एक दिन तो बोले कि जाओ ठीक है फिर दूसरा दिन मैंने मेरी टिकट बुक हो गई थी 
मेरा फ्लाइट हो गया था तो फिर मैं उस दिन में जा रहा था फिर मैंने बोला कि सर मैं मैं कुछ सेवा करना चाहता हूँ अगर आप बोले तो मैं रुक जाऊँगा मुझे मुझे काम कुछ सेवा करना है सो ही सेट केरू भाई आई वॉन्ट टू बी वॉलेंटियर एन आई सेट ओके बट यू आर लिविंग नाउ सो ही सेट आई कैन स्टे एन आई सेट यू आर लिविंग नाउ एवरी वन वॉज इन अ क्यू दे वॉन्टेड टू लिव ए एस ए पी एंड यू आर सेंग दैट यू वॉन्ट टू स्टे एंड ही सेट यस I can stay, and he stayed. He came as a vacuee. He could have boarded a flight, but he chose to board on a bib and become a volunteer. Each and every volunteer here, like they came on willingly to do do this seva. So, I have asked, "What is the power? What is the force?" So, in a simple sentence, I have said that like our guru has done it, so we have to do it. and as always that bapa has told us even pramukh swami maharaj has told us to make this our life motto that in the joy of others lies our own and that's the thing that our gurus like mon swami maharaj and pramukh swami maharaj has never constructed the the satsang values or embedded the satsang values just within bps or just within our satsang it's it's broader it's it's everyone bijana bhala ma bhalu che potano ema ema kai biju kai nathi e bijana bhala ma etle badhana bhala ma while the volunteers continued to serve under freezing conditions with little or no sleep guru hari mahan swami maharaj stayed up for hours to continue to guide to instruct to inspire through regular phone calls and zoom calls that really really helped Uh, to you know bring that positivity uh, and everyone was just charged up say that if bapa can do this for us so we can i think that was a driving force behind everybody's inspiration and made made all of us come together pull together and work in one direction he encouraged us to go beyond just the physical camp to provide emotional rehabilitation which is so deeply needed in times of war to overcome the trauma and death and disaster uh, the greatest um comfort we will get is to know that each and every one of them is home safely our job doesn't end once they leave our relief camp and so with as many details and information we have we are going to try and touch base and connect uh with all the people who have been affected as many as possible to make sure they're safe like quite a lot of people messaged us when they reached uh, india but this one was very special because uh, after the message we received also call from her father and uh, they were so thankful to us that uh, we have we have been very 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 kind to those uh, people who were in the need and that's really amazing uh, uh, i had a zoom call with muskan uh, a lovely young lady uh, who suffered her own tragedy and the same experiences in fleeing the uh, persecution in Ukraine uh, but who also lost a friend out of tragedy and when i was speaking to her my wife joined me on the call um i think she was still trying to deal and cope with what had happened to her so she was happy that she was home but i think a little bit overwhelmed by the attention that was coming towards her and perhaps it is still dwelling in her mind what she went through because there i think there will be these issues that these young people will be facing for a long time the other person i spoke to is bala he is from um south india who's now become a friend of mine um he was there uh with his sister uh charu who's still remaining in poland because bizarrely and remarkably um she's looking to kind of continue working there or maybe even go back to ukraine Bala joined a Zoom call with me and it was wonderful because he brought his mother on the call in fact his mother insisted on being on the Zoom call and she was incredibly gracious incredibly kind she was so grateful uh to all of the volunteers at BAPS sir we we grateful to you sir uh, you are like god sir uh, bala told me uh, that your organization uh, so happy sir i feel so happy Thank you so much sir. No 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 mom I mean it wasn't me it was uh so many volunteers from our organization they did all the hard work you know 
I was fortunate enough to meet people like Bala and your daughter and various other people and hear their story and their journey, which was tragic, difficult, challenging. And, um, and they made it through all of that and they came to see us. Um, and uh, their, uh, their courage is to be admired. And yours too, mom, you know, the fact that you had to sit there and wait for news, I'm sure for many days, must have been very, very difficult. You know, the list is long. You know, we have a lot of people to go through, uh, but we'll try to get through as many as possible because the implications of this war are long, you know, and for some, the battle still goes on. So we want to be there to help them. Behind the selfless service provided by BAPS, our true strength and the source of inspiration has always been, will always be pure spirituality. It is the prayers and the blessings of great spiritual personalities who continue to pray, who continue to inspire us with their words and wisdom and their timeless presence that we continue to fight guidance of healing humanity and keeping and sustaining peace. In serving others selflessly, equally and wholeheartedly, we are serving God. Helping even one life is healing humanity.